It's time for a little horror story, guys. I mean, actually a horror story. Based on horror. I'm gonna let the light go because, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable to have it going the whole time. But anyway, I'm just gonna relax and tell you this story because it's really a trip, okay. So we all know about horror, right? You know, horror movies and stuff like that, so. So this is how it works, okay? Every horror, you know, horror story has rules, just like anything else. Otherwise, there wouldn't be that much horror sometimes. But most horror stories have some kind of rules. You know, this is sort of like Orson Scott Card's idea that in a fantasy story, magic has to have certain rules, you see, because if magic didn't have any rules and anyone could just have whatever they wanted instantly for whatever reason, and then, you know, it wouldn't be magic, you see, because we have to restrict the magic a little bit so it just doesn't, you know, take away from the drama of the story and there's no plot anymore because everything you want to go, ooh, it's always here, you know, which I think is a short-sighted view of life. <clears throat> But if we're gonna play that game, so here we go. So here we have a horror, and we have to have rules to our horror. So this is the only rule to um, this horror story, okay? It's just one rule. You can only die if you're completely nude. It's great, isn't it? So, for example, no matter what's coming after you, if you even have a thread of clothing on, you'll be fine. But God help you. If you lose all your clothes, you're dead deader, just this dead, 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 like Friday the 13th, dead like, you know, like, like those Stephen King dead, okay, it's just, it's just like, ah, you're dead, okay, so the goal is, like, you know, never be nude, okay, and, you know, don't think too far on that, because, um, there are no exceptions, except for showering, there is an exception for showering, because, you know, we don't want everyone looking, like, real grungy, okay, so, the one exception is as long as you're inside a shower scrubbing yourself clean, you're okay. But that's the only exception. Okay, and once you're done showering, you get a free terry cloth robe, okay, and, that, and that's how you get set from there. And then you have to figure out some way to, to switch in the normal clothes without taking off the terry cloth robe. Because if you're completely nude, you die. If something's trying to kill you. So that all established, let's just take us through a scenario here, okay, so... You know, Tim comes home, and he's like this older guy, sort of balding, he's really tall and kind of lanky, and he's carrying an attaché case, and he's wearing a suit, you know, he's got a tie, and, he, you know, he has, like, you know, you know, dress shoes, and it's been a long day, he's tired, so he comes home, and first he opens and shuts and locks the door, you know, mistake number one, and then he tosses his attaché case onto the chair, mistake number two, you know, he loosens his tie, Big mistake number three, big mistake number three. Leans down to pet the dog, neutral, neutral. And then, you know, he kicks off his shoes, big, big, big mistake number four, big mistake number four. You know, never kick off your shoes without immediately putting on something else, okay? You know, kicked, uh, kicked off his shoes, just wandering in socks now, oh God, bad, bad move, bad move. So then he walks over to the, you know, to the closet, you know, to open it up and put his, like, hang up his jacket. And sure enough, out of, you know, like you would expect, out from the closet leaps this giant nude bald guy with an axe and a giant erection. So now he's face to face with this giant nude guy with a giant erection. Now don't ask why it is that the, the, the assailants can be nude, but the victims can't be nude. So you see the assailants, they're almost always nude, like some sort of like Grim Reaper kind of, you know, effect, I guess. But but the victims are never new. So the first thing the guy does is rips, you know, is just chops off his tights, grabs his tie, and axes it off right there. So now he's already, you know, minus one layer of defense. And so, you know, and plus there's that reaction time, you know, where you're just like shocked, you know, and then like, you know, in that amount of time, he manages to rip off the buttons of a shirt. You know, which is now, you know, another chink of the armor is now missing. And so, and then, you know, I won't lie to you, you know, our, you know, Tim probably pooped himself and pissed a little at this point, and that was another distraction for a few moments, and during that time, the guy was able to loosen his belt and pull down his pants. So now he's hopping around with these pants around his ankles, and he's stumbling over the couch, he falls, oh, at first, and then he slams, ah, and, and then meanwhile, the guy's like, leaps over the couch, and now he's over him, and what he's, you know, you think he would just raise the axe and just chop him right down and cleave, you know, right like that, but 
he does and instead because of the rules of the game he starts trying to get the rest of his shirt off get this shirt off you know and and that's when tim sort of comes to and he grabs a flower vase and just smashes it over the back of the guy's head and it's all around his blood and there's a scalp you know his, his scalp kind of cracks open and there's a lot of blood coming down his face but he's not out of the picture yet by any means he's still going strong so he raises up you know and that's when he grabs one of his shoes and wrenches it off and throws it over his shoulder and like you know things are getting desperate now right so now tim's hopping around you know and he has this terrible tactical choice as he remove his pants so he can move freely but by removing his pants he's gone and he's minus another layer of protection and that's when the guy decides it for him by just chopping you know to act straight down through the pants you know so now they're on like one on each leg and okay so now he's running around the house with a dog barking the guy's just swinging his axe in circles you know trying to get him you know wee you know, and, and you know, Tim's this old guy and he doesn't have a lot of energy, you know, so he does anything he can. He picks up a wine bottle and pops the cork right in the guy's face. And the cork hits the guy in the eye. He's going, oh, I hurt a little. And that gives, like, Tim time to run into his bedroom. He slams shut the door, locks it, and runs to his closet and puts on his gray Armani suit. So now the guy's like, you know, really, you know, peeved out and he's chopping down the door with his axe, trying to, you know, burst it open. And then he, and imagine just the look of consternation on his bloody face when he sees the guy's now wearing an Armani suit. Shit! <laughs> so anyway, so that's when, like, you know, you know, um, Tim picks up his out of shake case and just starts swinging it at the guy and he misses all six times and causes a rip in his sleeve. Oh, mistake number seven. And so then, you know, they're just going at it, you know, ripping, you know, and showing, you know, and screaming. And meanwhile, the neighbors are looking in in complete horror, you know, and one of them doesn't even have a shirt on. And he realizes what's going on, runs to the apartment, puts on nine layers of clothes and a winter coat and comes back in the hot sun and just watches in pure horror and disbelief while sweat drips down his face. <gasps> face, you know, plushed up against the glass like, mm, oh. You know, and so meanwhile, you know, it's just like, how is Tim going to, you know, get out of this? I mean, you know, he's, you know, what is he going to do, you know? And it turned, that's when it hits him right then and there. The only way to get rid of the assailant is to clothe him. So that's when he dives into the bathroom and, and like, and remembering that, you know, the little, you know, the loophole about showering, he throws himself in the shower and turns on the shower water and then like the bug, the bad, you know, the, the, the big axe, like, ah, shower. So then he just has to stand there grumbling while, you know, Tim like scrubs, <laughs> you know, and he has his axe just like a less than a quarter inch from the, you know, from Tim, you know, you know, and, and then in this brilliant moment, Tim grabs the terry cloth rope and throws it over his shoulders. Whee! And the guy realizes he's clothed. I'm clothed. <gasps> and drops his axe and then he just starts, I'm melting. And that's how Tim lived another day. <laughs>